Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here with us this morning as we bring in the new year. Now that Wayne's here, we can get started. I was worried you weren't coming, Wayne, and we were going to have to cancel the service. So as I was looking through uh, the lectionary and figuring out what scripture references were for today, Though I'm probably supposed to know this as a pastor already, I didn't know, that today is the day, according to the lectionary that we've been using, which is actually an LCMS uh, one year, I think, lectionary, anyway, uh, today is the day that we celebrate or recognize not only the day that Jesus was named, after, his, after it says after eight days as part of the scripture reference from today, but also his circumcision. I want you to pause for one moment and consider the depth of what that means. Baby Jesus, the God-man, was circumcised. Circumcision being part of what sealed the deal or brought the people into the covenant of God. The covenant that he established with his people that identified his coming that was about him saving the world he was brought into that covenant that's extremely profound is it not we talk about christ coming as a man i say it all the time he became the thing that he created well now you have a covenant which he created and established And yet now he's a part of that covenant. That to me blew my mind as I was going through. And like I said, I'm supposed to know this probably already and and I didn't. So hopefully this morning as we bring in the new year, that's something that you contemplate and think about uh, as we celebrate not only this day as being a new year and Jesus being named and in circumcision, but uh, the depth to which Christ went as he was brought down and brought low. So... Uh, We begin our service this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 24, verses 1, 9, and 10. The earth is the Lord's, and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Would you please rise and pray with me our opening prayer before we begin with our opening hymn. Lord, we are extremely grateful. We're grateful for your birth, Lord. We're grateful for your name. And we're grateful, Lord, that you've established a new covenant with your people. Thank you, Lord, for being the thing, all the things, and completing all the things that we could not. Thank you for standing in our place. This morning, Lord, we stand in your temple. Lord, we stand in your presence, and we ask that you would fill this place with your glory. May your word ring forth, and may your spirit freshen within us a kindling, a fire, a revival, Lord, this morning. May this new year start bright, And may you be what brings it in. In your holy name, amen. We'll sing together hymn number 545, Because He Lives.
going to be a good new year because he lives. As we come before him, let us know and be reminded that we need forgiveness of our sins. So let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins with the confession found on page two. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are Seven. I'm not sure why this piece of scripture is for today's scripture lesson, but I would suppose that it would be a great thing to start off the new year with a benediction. So the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, verse 23 now, speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. The New Testament lesson comes from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming of faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offsprings, heirs according to the promise. Here ends the New Testament lesson. The gospel lesson, would you please rise for the reading of the gospel lesson, which comes from Luke Chapter 2, verse 21. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Here ends the gospel lesson. Thank you. 
joining together with all those who believe and are a part of the congregation. So let us confess our holy faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hymn number 602, Nearer My God to Thee.
Good morning. Greetings in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our sermon text uh, this morning is comes from Luke chapter 12, uh, beginning with verse 13. Reading in Jesus' name. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me the judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my house and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do a small thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried, for all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old and with treasure in, heaven, in the heavens that does not fail, where, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is your holy word. And as we enter this new year, it's our desire to uh, to learn from you on the first day of the year. Would you teach us, Lord, from your word and demonstrate your spirit's power to do a change in our hearts, God. I pray that you would increase our love of you and of your truth. Please uh, now speak to us plainly and clearly and uh, allow me to speak this, your word, with uh, excitement and unction that it deserves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I uh, want to introduce myself to you. My name is Pastor Andrew Olson. Uh, this is my wife, Alexis, and we have two daughters, Mariah and Selah. Uh, we are missionaries with Lutheran Bible Translators serving in Tanzania, East Africa. So Bible translation is a process by which we take the Word of God and we, we translate the Bible and make it available in a language um, that does not yet have it available. It's how the kingdom of God spreads to new places. Without the word, how can they hear? So that's what we do. Um, and if you'd like to know more, you can visit our website there. Um, but mostly I'm here to share the word of God with you, to encourage you in, in the faith. And that's something I love to do. Um, the, the title of this message is A New Year's Choice. Uh, and I think it's a good thing at the beginning of a new year to consider what the whole year ahead of us has uh, before us. And, uh, and, and so, I, I don't know if you, any of you have heard this, but uh, supposedly if you lift up your left leg at the stroke of midnight, you will start the year on your right foot. On the right foot. 
And I think that's all of our desires. We want to start the year off right. Uh, and there is a way to do that. I believe that as we learn from God's word, we will actually only be better for it. We will only grow in wisdom, and that wisdom will flow out through our lives and how we live. And so I think New Year's is a great time for this sort of thing, evaluating the past, considering the future. And that's really um, what this text, I believe, is about. Um, and so I want to I share a little bit about a, uh, a real New Year's, uh, a New Year's Day service I was at once. And this image so s- struck me that I just had to share it with, with you. The pastor said, imagine when you leave the building today, you could pick up a red card or a green card when you leave the service. And if you pick up the red card, by this time next year, on New Year's next year, you will be closer to God, but you will make no money more than you had last year. You'll have the exact same amount of money. Or you can pick up the green card, and you will grow exceedingly wealthy this year, but at the end of the year, you will be no closer to God than you were the year before. And he said, which would you rather have at this time next year? As I looked inside my heart, it was a hard choice. And every single year since then, I've always thought about this card thing. You know, it seems very hypothetical, which would I choose if I had such a powerful choice? But the thing is, this is a choice we often make in the day in, day out. How will I live? And so I want to just bring your attention to this because um, I believe this, this parable here calls us to reality. It calls us to be aware of the choices we make. There's a man, he's quarreling with his brother. He's saying, tell him to divide the inheritance. Uh, he is also making a choice, a choice which is putting him at conflict, right? Um, in a new year, there are many choices. And I think the first thing that we would learn from the text here is to be aware of the choices that stand before us. Uh, to be aware. We're going to do three. It's going to be A, B, C. It'll be really easy for you to remember. So the first is to be aware of the choices that we have. You see, because there's, there's always a path of wisdom, and God, God's word calls us to that path. In the Proverbs, it continually says, choose a path of wisdom. Um, because there is a choice. You can take a choice. You can go down God's path often, or you can go down the world's path. And they both, uh, they both have different endpoints, don't they? But here in, in this parable, the man has chosen to quarrel with his brother. Uh, and Jesus replies with this, this parable about the rich. What? What does your Bible say as a heading here? If you have the ESV. The rich something. The, par- the rich fool. Isn't that curious that it would call this man a rich fool? So by, by our understanding, has this man chosen the wisdom of God or the foolish path? He's chosen the foolish path. And that is going to lead him, we're going to look at him a little bit closer now. He said, the land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? I don't have anywhere to store my crops. So I'm going to tear down everything I have and I'm going to build bigger bins so I can house all the grain that I have. Uh, and I think what we would see is that this man has in mind something we would all want, a, a comfortable retirement plan. He wants to be able to take it easy in the future. And isn't that something we all aspire to? We see that on the news. We see it on magazines. Retire early. Have a good life. And it sounds pretty nice. But is that the wisdom of God? Or is that the wisdom of the world? I think we should do well to be aware that there is a choice being made when we choose, like this man, to just store up in abundance for ourselves. And so we are aware, I think we are all now aware, we have choices that need to be made. So we're going to go on to point B, to beware. Beware of greed. Greed sometimes takes many different forms. In verse 15, Jesus said, he says, beware of what? Be on your guard against all covetousness. In the NIV translation, Jesus says, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
The reason that he uses the word all or all kinds is because there are many different ways to be greedy. And aren't we as a society, the American people, kind of a little bit known for that? Being a little bit on the greedy side. I think as a society, that might be true. As Christians, I know that's not true of us, is it? Um, but greed can have a very pretty face. And so I think the reason I wanted to share this partly is because I think if we identify, we identify the way of the world, it's easy to see it. So that we don't go into this whole new year following the way of the world, but that we'd rather follow God's true wisdom. Um, there are four types of greed that from a guy, a guy who studied this a lot. I really liked his outline. He said there are four types of greed. So I'm going to share them with you, and you can see if you think these are correct. He says, greed is like a termite. It's out of sight, but it's boring deep into our hearts. It doesn't attract attention as it eats away at our ability to be generous. Jesus warned us to be on our guard so we can assume we already... Um, so we can assume we are already infested with greed, but if you have trouble spotting it, here is what it looks like. The four types of greed this man believes in, and I think these are pretty accurate, could be more than just four, but he says first is hoarding. The hoarder believes that he cannot be generous with his money until he has set aside enough to ensure a comfortable future. He is insecure about his future and his willingness to trust in money rather than trusting in God leads him to ignore the other people around him. Hmm. So there's hoarding. Trying to get a stockpile for ourselves. Isn't that a type of greed? And it even sounds pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, we all want to be secure. Second type of greed, overspending. This form of greed fits into the life of an impatient person. The overspender confuses needs with wants and as a result, spends more than his income allows, leading to debt, and he works tirelessly to get out of debt. That's another type of greed. It's just get money, spend it, even if it makes me go into debt. We see that a lot. Comparison. This is a competitive greed. It believes that we must match the lifestyle of someone else to show that we are equal or better than them. The Bible speaks about this type of greed as envy. So we have hoarding, there's, there's uh, overspending, there's comparison. And then the fourth one is entitlement that he, he says. An entitled person believes a lie that if I don't have the money for it, someone else should buy it for me. After all, I deserve to have it even if I didn't work for it. This type of greed displays a lack of gratitude and often anger. I think if we look around us or even look inside us, we might see that little shards of these things are just... They're just like weeds that grow everywhere, aren't they? We can have these attitudes where I've got to keep up with the Joneses or I've got, to, I've got to do this and that because that will raise my status or I need to set aside this amount of money so that I can have a comfortable future. And in so doing, in each of these ways, we overlook the chances to be truly rich. You see, the, man, the reason he was a, called a rich fool is because he chose the wrong type of riches. He could have had heavenly barns, and instead he's chosen to have earthly barns. What was the accusation God accuses him of? It says, fool, God said to him. Whoa, if God says something to you, you better listen, right? God says to, to him, the rich fool, fool, this night your life will be required from you, and the things that you have prepared Whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. I think in the parable we see this man, he's not rich towards God. He's only rich towards himself. He's only rich towards his neighbors. He's only rich towards his future. And I think that the, we would learn well to identify his mistake. Um, Proverbs 11.28 speaks about a person who's trusting in riches. It says, He who trusts in riches will fail, but the righteous will flourish like a leaf. And the ironic thing about this man's great wealth is that it's all going to end up with somebody else. And that's, that's the case. We all work hard in life, but at the end of the day, when we're gone, it's not ours anymore. All, the only thing that's truly lasting is what, what eternity has for us at that point. And so, okay, Andy, why are you sharing this of all things? I believe that...
that you can do better than this rich fool in the new year. And I believe that instead of losing your things when you die, you can have them forever in a way by storing up for yourself treasure in heaven as Jesus calls us to do. He says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we, we are aware that there's choices. We're all making choices. We can beware of greed. But the solution to the heart that is set on greed is a funny one. But Jesus says it in verse 22. It's to see where God provides. Okay, so it's not the ABCs because actually it's A, B, and S. But you'll never forget it now because it's being aware and beware and seeware. It's really easy to remember this, okay? <clears throat> Notice in verse 22, Jesus says, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. So he's shared this whole parable, and then he says to his disciples, Okay, therefore, don't be anxious. And isn't that a funny transition for him? To say, here's this man who was a fool, therefore don't be anxious. But it's the solution to the fool's problem. You see, if he would have only seen what God was providing for him, he would not have strained himself to death. He would not have built this entire empire only to let it slip through his fingers. If he was truly recognizing what God had given him, he would have been thankful to God. He would have had a relationship with God. And every day that, that same thing is, is right before us. He says, look at, the, look at the birds. Look at the lilies. Are they toiling to no end? No, but they have all that they need. In this new year, it's my hope for you that, that we would be like the lilies and the, the birds that we would see what God has provided for us and be happy with it. Instead of taking these many forms of greed as we try to aspire to be somebody we're not, we would just be thankful for the things that God has given to us and to set our hearts on heavenly barns. Um, Proverbs 19 and verse 17 says, Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will reward them. So it's so interesting. Jesus said, sell all you have and give to the poor. He's inviting you to have real wealth and exchange your earthly treasure for treasures in heaven. And so I, I know that this, this it might be a strange thought for new, new Year's service, but in this new year, as you choose each and every day, it's almost like the two cards are there every day. Today, am I going to choose to try to grow closer to Christ? Or today, am I set on my own things? And as we see with the rich fool, it's much better to seek heavenly treasure. In closing, I want to tell you about um, this little church building. Sorry. This little church building is on an island in, in the middle of nowhere in Africa. And this island has 100,000 people on it, but there's only 1,000 Christians there. And the, the, that 1,000 Christians, they pooled what little money they had as African farmers and fishermen. And they said, you know what we're going to do? Let's plant a church. And we're not just going to plant it anywhere. We're going to plant it in the most witchcraft-infested area on our island. And so they bought some property right next to the biggest shrine that these people worship at. He said, that's where we're going to build it, right there. They put their money together, and they built the foundation up to about four feet. And uh, I visited this place, and I thought, what in the world are you doing? You know what's right next door here, right? You know that there's no Christians living here, right? And they uh, said, yes, we know. But God said that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not stand against it. And the Christians said, we believe that this is where the kingdom of God is going to be soon. Maybe even you'll preach here one day. But they are an example to me of, of wisdom. You see, because instead of using their money to build a bigger storehouse or build a better donkey cart, they put their money in the kingdom of God. They put their money into barns that will never be destroyed, to heavenly treasure. 
And as I saw that, I thought, Lord, may it be for me as well. May I not be so focused on everything I have to gain in this year that I miss the opportunity to be part of what you're doing. And I hope that for you, that might be the same. I know you came to church because you believe this. You're here on New Year's, Sunday, uh, New Year's Day because you want something good this year. I guarantee you, when you have this God's word and you live according to it, you will be a wise man and not like the rich fool. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this uh, challenge and this encouragement, Lord, that you provide for us. And you provided us your word so that we would not live like the world does, but as you do. So God, give us that heart of wisdom. Give us the heart like you have of generosity. So that when we see other people in need, we would not be storing up our own pile, but that we would be sharing with those we find in need. And God, we thank you that you have given us this life and this choice this year. I pray that you would bless us now as we go into 2019. Would this be a year where we choose the red card and say, God, I want to grow closer to you this year. That this year and next time, in 2020, if you tarry that long, we'd be even closer to you than we were today. I know that that's possible, Lord, because you are with us. We pray in Jesus' name that you would help us to that end. Amen.
the treasures, Lord, that we're able to store up in heaven. Thank you that we're not left to our own devices, Lord. Thank you that we're not left to save ourselves. Thank you for your coming. Lord, give us wisdom to grab a hold of the cross and to hold tight. Give us the wisdom, Lord, to continue to choose righteousness, to place you first, to grow in you above all things. Lord, give us wisdom to love you and to love others. Lord, we pray for your hand of healing to be on those who are sick. Even in my own family, Lord, as we struggle with strep throat now, I pray, Lord, that you would keep this spreading to a minimum. Lord, many of us are dealing with different issues and different things. May our circumstances not cloud our judgment on the greatness of who you are. And may the closeness that we have with you not be determined by how well we think you are providing for us in our life. But rather, may we continue to always see you in spite of circumstances the great God that you truly are. We ask for you to be with those, Lord, who serve our nation and serve our community. Every caregiver, doctor, nurse, EMT, CNA, whoever it may be, Lord, give them strength. And I ask for a blessing, Lord, this year on all of our farmers. As they are the bedrock our country. Bless each and every one, Lord, in our congregation. And I ask that you would set tasks before us. Good works so that we might, we might walk in. Lord, and place in each and every member an unbeliever in their path. That we might share the love of God with those who do not know you. That the hope of the gospel Love for which we love you, which you have loved us, may be shared with others who have no hope and who have no love. We pray all these things in your name as we pray the prayer to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.